That's it. Okay. What is that? In the summer of 1903, on the Oseberg Farm in Vestfold County, a farmer named Nut Rom stumbled upon a breathtaking discovery. Rom sent a frantic telegram to Professor Gabriel Gustafson, a leading archaeologist of the time, who immediately came to the site to see what all the fuss was about. What Rom had found was a burial mound containing a stunningly preserved Viking ship. Well, you know me, I've got to go and have a little look. And lately I've been doing quite a few videos about the fact that we seem to be Indians and a lot of them had elongated heads. They're everywhere, even totems, worldwide. Every, nearly every culture's got totems. And then we come to this Viking ship. When you first look at that, do you see totems and all that or do you see more like an indian boat i might go and have to have a look and look up what indian boats are let's go and do that before we continue hmm well they're not far off are they and those are indian boats i just don't know why they do it to us why do they do it to us? Look, that's nearly the same. I mean, these are quite similar. Same sort of size. Why, oh why, do they have to pretend that it's all so different when it's all actually very similar? Maybe not so much this one, but this one looks very similar. All you've got to do is put the round thing on the tops. You know, they're just a different set of Indians. Same sort of size canoes. Anyway, I just went and looked up some pictures about this boat. Ship. There's them showing you what's on the top of the boat. But actually, when you look at the pictures of it found, that is what you see. And at the other end, it's like that. These are a bit smaller, but do you see? you see? It could have just been more like that. Should I say? They found a few things. They found obviously the bodies. Two women. One was about 80 and I think one was in the 40s. They said they found parts of animals. There was tapestries. Or oh, I might go and look up tapestries in a minute if I remember. But you know, when you look at that, you, it's made to look like it's such a big ship, but in reality, it's only like canoe size. It's not a very big, you know, if you look at the little diagrams, you think it's some great big vessel. Look at it, it's some, but it's just a canoe. Canoe-like ship. So obviously it's in Norway in the museum. But looking at the ship, I just thought, Indian. But I don't know whether the cart and the sleighs, maybe the sleighs, I don't know. But anyway, we're going to look at the pictures. Oh, here we go. Here's the sleigh. These sleighs and the cart, which is in there, probably wasn't much room for anything else, to be honest. But they were well made. Look at that. Just look. If that's it today. Look at how well made that is. It's not even just the beautiful carvings on it, or even the ship. It's... I mean, I actually thought maybe it wasn't even a burial well i suppose they found the animals maybe they'd had their heads chopped off that seemed to be a similar pneumonial thing in the indian times the indian vikings but i was wondering maybe they got caught 
in a tsunami or something and just got covered. Who knows? I wonder how inland it, how much inland it was found. I didn't see that bit, but it's quite interesting looking this up. There are quite a few photographs on it, at least. There's the tapestry, so I might go and have a look a little bit at that just to see what the drawings are saying, because they want these as heathens with pickaxes, you know, charging at you. When I actually look at the little, I mean, it's called a Buddha, but he's not a Buddha. I found this picture, he's part of a bucket, which obviously they found there, and when the handle goes up, I'll show you, it's going to come up in a minute, but this, this thing was amazing that they're able to put this, or show you all this that's left. See that ship, it's a canoe. It even had a bed in it. You're like... Wow, I mean, how much room was there in? I suppose they were burying, weren't they? So crazy to think that they'd do that, though, in a boat. I don't think it was the normal thing. But then they make it sound like maybe something happened, and then it was, ha and then they all got buried. So I think it's a style of bed now. There, look, what does it look like? An Indian, not a Buddha. Yes, it's on a bucket, but it could still be an Indian. Does it have to be a Buddha? Even look at that, the swastika. But look how beautiful this cart is. It's beautifully made. Look at that, if they're able to Maybe they put some of it back, but this thing is gorgeous. I, uh, I, I, I think some animal bits were found there, but you, I wanted to know if they had elongated heads but you can't actually find that out because it's not enough of the head to look at, I don't think, or maybe they're not going to show you because the Vikings, it has to be a certain way. I mean, in one way, it's in mounds. I'd like to know what's in the other mounds. So, it was found, well, it was 1903, 1904. It's a, from a long time ago, but I mean, that cart and the sleighs, they're quite amazing because it's 22 metres long. Um, there, there was four sleighs in there. You're like, wow, it's amazing that they could have got, why would they put them? You should have killed them and then buried them there to get them out of the way. Why would you hide all the sleighs? See, we just go back to that bit there. See, I because I know there was artifacts in there, but look, they're totems again. Indians. That's what I reckon. That's the art of Vikings. Indians, still Indians. You know, once you put that take on it, it changes. So what's your thoughts? Look at that. Beautiful. That's what it looks like now. Like it didn't rot or anything, did it? The blue clay helped keep these things the way they are. But there's hardly any of the body left. But the wood survived. And that car is just like, and this, that sleigh is beautiful. That survived. So another one. These are Indians. Not so many of the chests, but uh, I think these are slightly different ones, but uh, they survived. But that is all that's left of the bodies.
and we might have to quickly just go and look up tapestries well the red indians had sleighs maybe not as beautiful as the sleigh but still they had reindeer as well they still had sleighs this is alaska they still have sleighs not many of the bones survived but the tapestries did hmm. there you go probably indian and they almost looked egyptian indians these will be indians i must admit this one here looks a little bit more egyptian like doesn't it how it's drawn do you think these look a little bit more egyptian -y like anyway what's your thoughts but the discovery was not just that of the ship. There was something else hidden inside it, too. The ship is believed to date back to the year 834 AD. Within the mound, there were grave goods, said to be among the richest and most varied ever discovered from the Viking Age, as well as the treasure. Sadly, laying there were the remains of two Viking women, but there was even more yet to be unearthed. When Professor Gustafson had removed most most of the soil, he found four elaborately decorated sleighs, a richly carved four-wheel wooden cart, as well as a number of wooden chests containing textiles and clothing. And beside all of those incredible artifacts were the remains of dogs and horses who had been sacrificed and placed in the grave. What they say to you about being an open, honest community? It seems to me that nearly everything is controversial, and I wondered what it was like for women actually wearing trousers because this is big thing about transsexual at the moment it'd be easier on youtube if i was one of those i think because then i wouldn't get harassed like i do for talking about other things but um it was obviously quite a controversial thing or it seems because france until recently um it was kind of against the law to wear trousers and some religions don't like it but it seems to me when i looked up history yet again that when it came to trousers men and women were wearing them alike so it wasn't seemed that when a woman put a pair of trousers on that they were masculine and then, of course, there's a little bit of a video in here about this lady explaining that they couldn't wear dresses and things like that when they were doing jobs in the First and Second World War. I suppose if you were making bombs and that and you've got a big flowy dress, it's not going to work, is it? So she was saying in her history, she couldn't see that women were wearing trousers all the time, but they would wear them for specific things, obviously working on farms or working. But when I looked at some of the trousers... I think they tried to make women look like men because none of the fashions are particularly feminine. I mean, they've got the 1920s, but obviously it's a little bit before that because the First World War was before that. It was 1918, wasn't it? So women must have been wearing trousers then. But um, they say that women started wearing trousers in the 1850s but why not say that they wore them alike i find this really incredible that when you go to look it up that it was alike but i just want to show you some trousers they just don't look that feminine and there's a little bit of footage on here about marlene dietrich being in paris and there being problems i mean she looks more like johnny depp there to be honest um i don't know it does that face I just don't know, but anyway, um, they're saying. I mean, what has she got in her in her trousers? It looks freaking big just here, whatever. It's probably her hand, but look at the size of it. So I, put, I don't know. That looks quite big, but maybe that's because they're trying to make it into a statement. But um, I don't particularly think that's particularly feminine. Do you? Another one here. Um, does she look particularly feminine in that suit there? She looks like a man to me. 
obviously that one says the 1940s, but do women look particularly feminine? I mean, they look like man's trousers, don't they? These things weren't actually called knickerbocker. Knickerbocker, yeah, knickerbocker, yeah. But anyway, more to do with um, knickers, the knicker sport. So these were trousers, but they are, aren't they? They're just short trousers, knee length trousers. And of course, a lot of men wore them as well, didn't they? So do those girls look very feminine? I thought the two on the left looked like boys, to be honest. Or maybe even all three of them look like boys in that picture. So before that, women were wearing knickers until the 20s you know even that one i just think they look like women wearing men's trousers anyway we're going to play this video now with a few more pictures and a couple of little people talking and saying things so let's continue with the video but again what's your thoughts because you know all the things that they go on about you know people are still fighting today for the rights to wear trousers france only let go of it in about two 2013 I'm sorry I'm getting some messages here <laughs> and um, you imagine women going out in trousers people you know especially if you had to you know everybody was wearing quite long dresses and then they saw a woman in trousers and they don't really go on about that now the big change for women as they were wearing trousers but history says they were wearing them together so it's all a bit bananas as usual because you know it is isn't it it's bananas anyway let's carry on with the video Marlene Dietrich is detained at a train station in Paris for violating a ban on women wearing pants, 1933. Frida Kahlo poses for a family portrait in her iconic three-piece suit and cane, Mexico, 1924.
It's a clothing item many, many of us likely take for granted, but just over 100 years ago, women were officially allowed to wear something besides a skirt or a dress. WRTV sat down with the Indiana Historical Society for this story. Just by looking at our collections, you just don't see a lot of women wearing pants. The question becomes, is that more of a social norm? Is it more of a legality? In 1923, the Attorney General stated that it was okay. This video so far has concentrated on women. And then I remembered that men, they had kilts, didn't they? And other cultures have had skirts. Even other centuries have been wearing skirts. Was there a big hoo-ha about men wearing skirts? Do you remember a big hoo-ha? They said the only reason they didn't wear the skirts anymore altogether really was because they were more thin looking. But uh, they were wearing them in the 1800s. So what does that mean then? Because that's when trousers came in and women were wearing them at the same time as men. There you go, seen as feminine. Hmm, they even wore socks. <laughs> of course, the Middle Ages up until the 1800s kilts whatever dress so yeah don't know about that but we forget that men have been wearing skirts the big hoo-ha for them changing at the same time as for women having trousers, they had them at the same time. Do you believe they only came in the 1800s? I don't know. Not many show us men wearing, um, you know, they're wearing trousers and things when they're pirates and everything, aren't they? But many cultures have skirts. And that little kid there has got kilt on. for women to wear pants in public. Though that statement was made, it wasn't really a ruling, it wasn't really a law that was put into effect. And so really women tended to even stay away from it after that and just wear it in certain situations. Women's activism, when it came to especially voting rights and women's rights and equality, um, that was really the spark. Those are the types of activists that were being arrested for wearing men's clothes or wearing pants. They would wear them as disguise when they were traveling so that they could feel more secure and be less of a target. There were several women that um, dressed as men and fought in the Civil War. And once you hit World War I, once you hit World War II, women are in the workplace. They can't be wearing a flowy dress while working heavy machinery. So they were given the ability to wear 
coveralls, overalls, pants. And so we've got some images of women working during World War II for the American Red Cross at the um, service center. They're wearing pants or rolled up pants in their work. But then when you look at the images of them socializing with the soldiers at the servicemen center, they're wearing their dresses again. So it was very, very situational. You wouldn't have seen a lot of women just wearing pants all of the time. They would have been wearing them for certain, for certain activities. You get into the 70s and you've got the Equal Rights Amendment and the fight for the Equal Rights Amendment and you have more focus on women's rights and organizations like um, the National Organization of Women are forming and it's hard to know when the actual legality changed on it. You still had schools up into the 70s that required girls to wear skirts or dresses. There were towns that would have had prohibitions that weren't or states that had prohibitions against women wearing pants. The question is, was it enforced? A woman was wearing pants in this, um, in this ad for Ellis Ayers. And it says, brunch pajamas. They were brunch pajamas. And so then I used that term and I found out that beach pajamas were a thing in the 20s and 30s. And so they're very kind of loose flowing pants that you wore to the beach. And I'm sure they were breezy and cool and more comfortable. I think they got around that fashion wise in, in ads like the LS Airs ads and things. They were very flowy pants and you know, they almost look like a long skirt. So it's just really interesting and really fascinating to look through the different time period. And of course, you can't talk about women in pants in that era without talking about Amelia Earhart. You know, she even designed her own clothing line at one point. Um, but she was a pilot. She's not, you know, you would see her in a dress at some events, but when you would see her in her pilot's gear, she was generally wearing pants. There are still countries that are dealing with this issue and trying to um, change the way that women's rights are. So depending on where you're at, this is still an issue. So I think a lot of times it was a municipal or a um, statewide as opposed to a federal law to do so. But there were definitely women that were more apt to flout the law or more apt to just be themselves. <laughs>